everybody, it's Sean and Paul Clark. Welcome back to my regular YouTube content. I'm sorry I've been away for a while. I had to go to Dallas uh, for MLG. I then had to come back to England or go back to England, should I say, because I'm in Sweden right now. Go back to England to get my uh, visa for China. Then I had to go straight to China. And now I'm in Sweden after the, the WCS Grand Finals. A day or a day before at least I travel before this tournament. The Dream Hack Finals of this year. And I'm here to preview it for you guys. Uh, before we get into it, of course, thank you again for Wikipedia and its staff. You can find them at wiki, sorry, wiki.teamliquid.net. Uh, there's everything you could find on this website, literally. Uh, they got all the news, they got strategies, competition, uh, general information, you name it. As you can see just on the left-hand side here is actually everything I just listed off. Um, everything, and even player base too. I use it a lot for player base. So definitely check this out, give it a whiz. I'm sure you'll be very impressed with it if you haven't used it before. But going into this now, of course, I'm doing a tournament preview for this upcoming DreamHack ISO Open Grand Finals at the DreamHack Winter LAN itself. Of course, if you don't know DreamHack, DreamHack hosts two LANs every uh, year for the past God knows how many years they've been doing it, a very long time. DreamHack Summer and DreamHack Winter. So it's rightfully so that the DreamHack ISO opens, concludes at the biggest LAN of the year in Sweden or out there. All right, so looking now uh, down here, we've had a great 2012 year with the ISO Open. We stopped in Stockholm. We then had the DreamHack Summer and Valencia over to Spain and Bucharest. We had four different champions, four different runners-up. As you can see, Thorzane with the historic win in front of his home audience, in front of his home crowd. His grandmother was so proud of him. Uh, and, of course, then we had Mana winning uh, on SVT. Um, actually, both tournaments on SVT were they Mana winning DreamHack Summer, should I just say, against Demaga. A massive, impressive run. Managed to beat Stefano down as well. Uh, and then we had Teja winning in Valencia with that massive comeback against 4G. I think it was 4GG, should I say, sorry. Uh, it was 2-0 for 4GG. Teja comes back to win 3-2. A magic event there for Teja. And then we had Nurcio versus Bly. A super one-sided, but a super well-deserved victory for Nurcio, who has been one of the best, if not you know, top two Zerg with Stefano in Europe for a very, very long time. Uh, but now it's time for the big boys to play at the DreamHack Winter Grand Finals happening on the 22nd to the 25th, a three-day tournament, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That's right. So if we click this link here, it'll take us to this beautiful page, which is actually the tournament itself. So much money on the line, first of all, this is always what I look at on the right-hand side. 550,000 sec, that's roughly $80,000, 60,000 euros, 50,000 pounds, whatever currency you're happy with, it's a lot of money. Um, it's going to be broadcasted by myself, I'm going to be casting with my gym partner, if only in control, and then Bitter and Rotterdam, Bitterdam, will be helping out on the secondary stream, coming over to the mainstream. We're going to be switching up. We're going to have a lot of fun together. It's going to be a great setup. And, of course, out of BC, the Canadian is coming to do our observing to make sure I don't screw up. Yes, and that's what his job is. And then we've got the beautiful Red Eye, the most experienced host there is in StarCraft 2, coming to bring the detailed information to host it, to string the tournament together in the Super Grand Finals. So it's going to be a great, great tournament. We have eight Protoss players, five Terrans, and seven Zerg. The prize pool is top heavy. It is top eight. So there are 32 players, including four players from an open bracket, which we haven't determined yet. So if you get top eight, you bank basically, you know, just, just shy of $4,000. It then doubles almost to go up to this, which we can see. Oh, it does. It is doubled. Uh, and then again, up to two. Second place, we have 14,000, 15,000, should I say. First place, a whopping $37,000. 250, quarter of a million sec, Swedish krona. It's a lot of money on the line, guys. And uh, as we can see, the format is next on the list. So the format is going to be group stage round robin. Everybody plays against each other. Six players within the group, a total of four groups. Top three of the groups will advance to the playoffs where we have first place, as you can see here. Um, first place goes directly into the round of eight. Second and third place get uh, seeded into the round of 12. So a 16 bracket, but with if we look down here, just shoot straight down to the bracket. There we go. Quarterfinals, one, 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 one. The four winners of each group. Second place, third place, second place, third place, all the way down. 
Uh, if we shoot back up again to have a look at the playlist, this is the playlist so far. We have Thorzin and Stefano, despite Pult winning or uh, coming in second, getting his slot here. He couldn't make it. He has to or wants to play in the GSTL with his team. Uh, so Stefano now moves up here. As we can see, Stefano re uh, replaces Pult as second seed from Stockholm. And as the highest amount of points... Show, on the other hand, though, will be filling Stefano's spot in the points. Because if we look here, Stefano was number one. But because he's got a direct seed because of Polt, that frees up one slot in the point system. Therefore, Show, who didn't quite make the cutoff point next to Naniwa here, gets the boost up. And now has the opportunity to play in this prestigious tournament. As we see, he fills the final spot. So good old Show gets his little location in this tournament. Monchi will replace Monster, who couldn't make it, unfortunately, as well. And that's really great for Monchi. We had a great breakout performance for him uh, in the, if we look here, he's actually just below here. 15th Genius couldn't make it either. Monchi takes his spot. Monchi had a great breakout in Bucharest. Made it to the live show. Made it to the top eight. But now he has a spot in the Dream Up Winter Finals. Well, let's look at the groups now, guys. So, Group 1. Tasia. Stefano. Freya. The SEC Show. <laughs> yeah. That is a group. And, of course, TBD is the, the open bracket player. Each group has an open bracket player to come in. But, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. That is a good group. So, I'm going to predict, first of all, I like to do predictions in my pre tournament previews because sometimes I get it right, and sometimes I look cool, sometimes I get it wrong, sometimes I look like a fool. But we'll work it out for now. So Tasia Stefano. So I have to go with Stefano as number one in this group. I think Tasia is going to put up a great fight, but I don't think he can beat down Stefano. I think it's going to be very close for first and second. I think Stefano in the deciding match will beat Tasia to grab first place to go to the quarterfinals. I definitely think Tasia is going to be second. And then it's really close. Of course, depending on the open record play between Freire and the STC. The STC has performed very well in the DreamHack ISO stops so far this year. He has shown short to the mark sometimes. Has underperformed on the big stage. But Freire is so good. Of course, a semi-finalist of the DreamHack summer. And I'm going to have to give it to the STC. I think it's going to be Stefano, Tasia, and the SEC show. I don't think he's going to be in the runnings. He hasn't been playing much StarCraft 2 recently. He's been playing a lot of Diablo. And, of course, it really depends on this guy from here. So that's my predictions without the guy we know coming from the open bracket. Going over Group 2 with Protoss Heavy Group, Mana, Bly, Sase, Stan, and Sake. I'm sure Bly's going to be very happy about this, but at the same time, very sad. And the way I say that is because Bly can be like, all right, one matchup to practice, but I think he could get broken down after the first couple of games the rest of the players are going to be able to watch and see potential holes in Bly's play. Bly's going to have to play the same thing over and over and over and over again. But as I say that, Bly has been using some wacky strategies this year, especially in the latest two tournaments, Bucharest and Valencia. He's been using two base Infesta and two base Hydra against Protoss. So I'm interested to see what Bly's going to bring this time around. Is he going to play like that again? Because he does have some very good players in here. Mana, Sase, Sake, and Star. Starnan, what a performance he gave at Bucharest. You have to commend him for his performance. A semi-finalist in Bucharest. An amazing run. An amazing run. Almost managed to beat Nurcio, but not quite good enough. But good to see him in here. And, you know, DreamHack's all about the breakout players, and he's definitely won. But then we have Mana, who played great in Bucharest, who is a DreamHack champion already. We have Sase, who's training in the Star Tail House in Korea. We have Saki, who's had a bit of a rough 2012. No, no doubt has had a rough year. Um, but still, can surprise anyone. And can never be underestimated, especially in a PvP group where he really is very good in the PvP. So, uh, looking at predictions here, I'm going to say Mana as number one. But PvP, it can be very difficult. But I'm still going to say Mana as number one. Bly as number two. And it's going to be a toss-up for number three. I'm, I say it because it's so close. And that can be completely wrong. It could be completely backwards. Because PvPs, anything can happen. It really can. And then Bly, I think, is going to be top three no matter what. So it's very, very close. It's kind of hard to predict that group. So I will try, though. So I'm going to go Mana, Bly, and Sase. 
depending on, of course, who comes through here. All right, group three, Zerg group. Ah, this is another difficult one to predict. Nurture, of course, the latest DreamHack champion of Bucharest, who's on form recently. Um, you know, arguably one of the best there is in terms of Zerg. Demarg has been a bit out of it recently. He's been playing a lot online. He's been practicing. He's obviously just got married as well recently. So I don't know how much practice he's had. Is a DreamHack, uh, not a DreamHack, sorry, an assembly champion, a DreamHack finalist. Ah, Demarg is always just so super talented. He rarely, actually, I've spoken to Demarg a lot, guys. And when I look at Demarg and I speak to him, he says he doesn't practice as much as everyone else does. But he uses the GSL as reference points for his own game. So I think he's going to be up to point on how to play. And he can definitely, definitely, definitely come out on top in this group. Targa has been performing super well. He's had a great DreamHack run as well. TLO managed to squeeze himself in to this tournament. It depends on how he's feeling, how he's practicing. He's looking good on his stream. Monchi, all right. Monchi did well in the last couple of DreamHack tournaments, but here I don't think he's going to make it out of the group. This is too... He, he's self-confessed. He hates this matchup. He's got four Zergs. Granted, he has to practice one matchup, but Nurcio, Targa, Demargatilo, you kidding me? I don't think the Monchi's getting out here, sorry. Um, I'm going to have to give the group to... Nurcio, I think his Zerg versus Zerg is fantastic. I think Tilo is going to be up there as well. I think he can make it out of the group, but it's very similar to group two. In, in mirror matchups, it's very difficult to call. Going over to group four. Wow. Wow. Just soak it in, guys. Thorzane, 4GG, Rhett, Hero. What? Are you kidding me? This group is insanely good. Wow. All right. Thorzane, of course, the DreamHack champion himself, winning the first DreamHack of the year, the DreamHack Open, Stockholm. 4GG, uh, finalist. Rhett uh, has been consistent in the DreamHack tournament. a semi-finalist, I think, this year at Stockholm. Uh, of course, it's just... It's really difficult to know. I know he's been moving... He's moved apartments recently. Um, he's been having a hard time adjusting to practice and he's stopped smoking. He's going to the gym and stopped smoking. Maybe he's kind of come out of that dark period where it is difficult to go through stopping smoking and maybe he's in the light. Maybe he's feeling great, but I think moving's taken a lot of his time. So I don't, not sure how much practice he's had in. Hero is hero. Just a, a magical player, um, is a magician. I think he's going to do so good here. He performed super good at WCS Asia, managing to beat Stefano for the first time ever, really. Um, he actually lost to Stefano 0-2 and looked terrible on day one, but gathered everything back together again and looked amazing for that top four finish, I think it was, um, at the WCS Grand Finals. Uh, an amazing, amazing run for Hero. Um, Naniwa, uh, or was it top four? I think it was top four, top eight. Anyway, really, really high finish. Look, Short-term memory, I'm so tired. Um, anyway, so Naniwa is uh, difficult to call. You know, he's, he's super talented, can do super well, has not been performing as well as he would like. So it's going to be difficult, especially within this group. Uh, it's, I think he's going to do okay, though, because I think he's got a really, really good Protoss versus Terran. I think he may be able to give 4GG and Thorzane a run for their money. I think Rhett may crumble because he hasn't practiced, so I think Naniwa is going to do well. And then Hero, I think Hero will beat him in the PvP. So I think Naniwa will definitely get definitely get top three. So that leads us over to the, the round of 12, the quarterfinals. That'll place these players in here in second, second, third, second, second, third. Semi-finals and finals, of course. So the race distribution is pretty good, to be honest. You know, three turns here, two turns over here. They aren't the same groups. I hope we do see a lot of turns advance through as we, all tournaments have been dominated by Protoss Serg. But nevertheless, it is spread out really, really well. Um, so that's kind of all that on the tournament. I've, you know, uh, put my uh, predictions out there and who I think is going to do well. Uh, remember, this tournament is happening on the 22nd, so Thursday to the 25th, which is Saturday. And I'm going to go ahead and show you now where you can find all the action again. It's going to be over at dreamhack.tv. Right now, because the tournament isn't live, this is where all the videos are of all the previous tournaments. So if you want to catch up, if you want to feel some of the previous tournaments we've had, you can go and check all videos out from here. Uh, there's different games, different tournaments, and so on and so on. Just relive some DreamHack magic, some DreamHack moments. As you can even see in the background here, we have like the crowd of, I think that was the Nordic Nationals. Um, an amazing, amazing feat. If you remember... The DreamHack Winter Finals of last year where Hero was crowned champion. He's coming back to defend that title here, guys. This 
is where to find out. So dreamhack.tv, when it's live, you go to this page and it'll bring you up with the streams, the two streams, the two main streams, and then there'll be multiple separate streams as well, community streams, different language streams as well. So make sure to check it out all here. So guys, thanks for watching this tournament preview. Uh, it's been Sean Paul Clark previewing the DreamHack ISO Open Grand Finals happening this weekend. Be sure to check it out.